Yeah. Well, here's your Chardonnay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, just hang on a second. If there's a Captain Hayes here, they're looking for you at the airport. Oh, that's me. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, he's on his way. He'll be on his way. Well, I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay. Good luck with that open heart surgery. Yeah. See you guys. Have a good one. Engine Company 4, first alarm, Oak and Main. Now, well, duty calls. <laughs> what do you have? That scenario is only funny because it isn't real. Nobody wants their doctor abusing drugs or alcohol before an important surgical procedure, or their pilot manning the flight controls while under the influence. Why then wouldn't we be equally concerned about over-the-road drivers using drugs and alcohol? This driver has a choice to make, just as all professional drivers do. It's tempting to bend any rule a little. Should I exceed the speed limit to make up for lost time? Should I violate hours of service regulations to cover more ground? Couldn't I have just one drink before I hit the road? Choices are related to responsibility. The actions of professional drivers may have greater consequences than other motorists because driving is their job. Professional truck drivers not only answer to their companies, insurance carriers, and customers, they also have the federal government looking over their shoulders. Even the driver's personal time is not necessarily his own when it comes to the use of drugs and alcohol. According to federal regulations, a driver may not consume alcohol up to four hours prior to operating a commercial motor vehicle or performing any other safety-sensitive function. That means a driver cannot drink alcohol during certain times while off-duty and during breaks, including lunch. For every drink, there's a consequence, and, and for some, it might be bringing the plane down to 400 people or, or hitting an underpass in the big truck or not seeing the two-year-old walk out the back door. Um, every drink has a consequence. A professional driver gives up some rights to privacy because of the safety-sensitive nature of his job. The physical effects of drugs and alcohol remain in the body long after they are consumed. And there are specific functions a driver simply cannot perform safely and reliably while under the influence. Whether a person believes he is impaired or not, even small amounts of alcohol or traces of mood-altering drugs can affect gross motor functions, reflexes, and judgment. I don't believe that there can be enough um, control, uh, personally, because um, you're lethal when you're out there. You know, you've got 80,000 pounds rolling down a road on 18 wheels. Um, y you can cause a lot of destruction unless you're totally alert. Um, I don't know if it, there isn't anybody, I don't care what people say, that you can't be under the influence and be alert at the same time. It just is, doesn't work. My job is a truck driver, and uh, I'm, that's a professional job, and I, and I really expect and demand other truck drivers to be professional out there and, and one one drunk truck driver takes out a family six in, in in the minivan and the whole industry and all the ones that are working hard feeding their families or paying their bills are going to be listed under that guy's or that woman's drinking mistake we have to inconvenience ourselves with the expense and the loss of productive time that it takes to send the driver in for random testing uh, in order to promote safety and put our money where, where our image needs to be. The controlled substances and alcohol use and testing regulations are designed for everyone's protection. It's a fact that using alcohol and drugs while driving is a killer combination. 
Alcohol accounts for nearly half of all traffic fatalities. The size and weight of tractor trailers alone can cause more deadly crashes than other vehicles on the road. So it's up to everyone who works in the trucking industry not to load the weapon in the first place. This burden rests most heavily upon the drivers themselves. According to statistics, crashes due to professional drivers under the influence of drugs and alcohol are not as prevalent as you might think. The problem is, when they do occur, they are often deadly. The trucking industry must remain vigilant in keeping drivers clean behind the wheel. This includes preventing new and experienced drivers from turning to alcohol or drugs as a way of coping with the rigors of the job. You know, you got to hustle. And that's the attraction for me was the more speed I took, the faster I could go, the more I could stay awake. Um, even driving as team drivers, um, it was really hard pushing 10 days at a, at a shot to stay awake, you know. And that's, that was the scary part for me because I drank more and more coffee, you know. And, and the thoughts of, boy, if I had some speed, I could really, you know. <laughs> get this load done, and, and there's ways of finagling to, to be able to do that. There is uh, apparent uh, amount of stress that can accumulate, and unless the person begins to learn how to deal with those things effectively and coping in a more healthy way, sometimes the use of chemicals to help with that seems like the uh, ready um, alternative. Uh, I, I've seen situations where nobody wants to say anything. The behavior goes on and on and on, but nobody wants to say anything, as if someday it'll just change, right? Uh, and the change is taking place, but it's not a positive change, it's a negative change. We had one driver that I sent in for random testing, and I was absolutely shocked to find out that he was using uh, that he he claimed that it was a weekend out with his buddies smoking marijuana but being a man of middle age with uh, a child in about fourth grade it was pretty surprising to me uh, to have him be uh, t come back with a positive test so I saw the value in first of all making sure that we do do the random testing some drivers have become skilled at hiding their addiction. They may know which substances are undetectable on their breath, or they take special effort not to encounter supervisors while they are under the influence. These are the accidents waiting to happen. When it comes to drugs and alcohol, there is no such thing as a small problem. Casual use of drugs or alcohol can easily lead to a full-blown addiction problem. And at that point, it's not just the person's life that spins out of control. Drug and alcohol use impairs a person's ability to operate a commercial motor vehicle safely, long after the drink is consumed or a drug is taken. That makes it a trucking company's business, the government's business, the public's business, and even the business of other professional drivers. If a professional driver has been using drugs or misusing alcohol prior to driving or performing other safety-sensitive functions. I drove in the loop, and you know State Street <clears throat> in Chicago, people are crossing and I'd be driving down Randolph Street and one of my big fun things to do was to step on the gas and floor it and watch these people jump away. Now to me when I was high and drunk I thought it was hysterical. Watch this, you know, I would say to myself. When I sobered up I realized how foolish that really was. You know, yes I was young but I was drunk out of my mind. Um, thank God I never had, I never killed anyone there and that's the big risk because you, it's so easy to kill someone on the road when you're not paying attention. This 12 ounce glass of beer, this 5 ounce glass of wine and this one and a half ounce shot of whiskey all contain the same amount of alcohol. Each one and a half ounces of alcohol takes the average body of about one hour to process and eliminate. A breath alcohol concentration of 0 0.04 or greater puts a driver in violation. He may not drive or perform any other safety sensitive functions. If the driver has a breath alcohol concentration of 0.02 to 0.04, he cannot perform any safety sensitive functions, including driving, 
for at least 24 hours. Of course, breath alcohol concentration varies from person to person. The bottom line is anything over zero is impaired. As for controlled substances, including marijuana, cocaine, amphetamines, opiates, PCP, and other drugs not prescribed by a physician, they are illegal. Even a trace amount of any drug in the system puts the user and others at serious risk. Um, you don't realize how far your disease goes, has gone, and your addiction has gone until you step back from it a little bit and take a look. Over a period of time, I'd always work my way up to management and then it'd get more stressful. I'd start drinking more and soon the effects would show and I'd lose job after job after job. And instead of blaming the drinking, I blamed the people I worked with. Oh, gosh, uh, it destroyed everything. It destroyed my family. Uh, it destroyed my relationship with uh, my uh, parents, uh, my siblings, um, my marriage. Um, and I couldn't, uh, as the disease, as, and I call it a disease, my alcoholism, chemical offense, as it progressed, uh, I kept losing all sorts of uh, jobs uh, through just not caring, you know, just really not caring. Uh, that attitude finally uh, takes over where there's no meaning to life. Virtually everyone knows about the long-term health implications of prolonged drug and alcohol abuse. But most people aren't thinking about the possibility of liver damage, heart disease, or central nervous system disorders when they get high. The short-term euphoria and escape is just too appealing. And somewhere in all of this, addiction takes over. Pretty soon, it's not a free choice to abuse drugs. The user becomes a slave to the habit. And by then, lectures about health and well-being are meaningless, if not laughable. A driver's livelihood is made behind the wheel. He may have a family or a significant other depending on him, too. Despite the pressures of the occupation, a driver who values his paycheck and way of life has to find ways to alleviate stress other than using drugs or alcohol. Some will argue that an occasional joint or a beer never hurt anybody. On the other hand, if it means risking one's job or violating the law for a 15-minute high or an afternoon buzz, it may indicate a serious substance abuse problem. When there is dependency, there is um, often a whole line of rationalizations around that, excuses, if you will. And part of that is um, uh, these are, uh, are situations where they justify the use in very elaborate ways many times. And uh, often these are situations where the excuses become more and more prevalent and uh, more and more exaggerated to the point where you just can't ignore it anymore. In my situation, you know, I blamed everything else. I would say, you know, it's this person that is doing, not doing their job right, it's this person. I don't have the problem. Everybody else has the problem. Um, I think denial of it is very strong. Federal regulations require employers to conduct pre-employment drug testing and random post-accident and reasonable suspicion drug and alcohol testing. This safety net helps pinpoint who in the company has a problem. One in six drivers who test positive for drugs or alcohol will display abuse or addiction patterns that justify treatment. Based on all those who test positive for cocaine, up to 60% will probably test positive again in the next three years, indicating that without intervention, those who use will likely continue to abuse drugs and alcohol. When you've hired a person, you, you begin to know them, begin to know their idiosyncrasies a little bit, and then you start finding out, then things start happening that are different. Um, a driver ta starts taking all kinds of advances, uh, check advances, okay? And, and maybe that could be for a hundred reasons, but one reason could be because he's trying to supply uh, his drug habit. Um, a driver could, most drivers are incredibly efficient with regard to their pickup and delivery times. And yet, um, now you, you, regularly now a driver's late or he doesn't get out of home on time and, and he could, he, could, he, could he have an alcohol problem? Um, in America, typically, there are um, situations where um, absence 
for a drug abuser will cause three to four times the amount of absence compared to non-users. But things like odor, um, breath, uh, those number one issues of, of disguising breath mints and things that will help disguise the odor of, of, uh, of ethanol on the breath from, from the night before or several hours before. Supervisors and other managers are required to be trained to determine reasonable suspicion when there are signs of drug and alcohol use. They will inform a driver of the need for testing based on what they've witnessed. Sometimes a supervisor may suspect alcohol and drug use in error because outward symptoms of a medical condition like diabetes can mimic drunkenness. But for the most part, tests are ordered for all the right reasons and drivers may not refuse a drug or alcohol test without penalty. Refusing to be tested is treated the same as testing positive. There is a broad band of, uh, of drugs, either over-the-counter or prescription, that if they make driving unsafe, uh, they, could make, they could make your uh, blurry vision. I mean, there is, you go down the list of things that could make driving unsafe. Um, and those, those, those drugs that you, you take uh, are also are also prohibited. I think everybody should be tested. I think at some point, you know, that's that has any safety factor. If there's any element of safety in what a person does, I think they should be uh, they should be willing to be tested. So the company is in a fantastic position to get that person to that next step. It isn't so much how they get into treatment, but that they get the necessary treatment. The success of drug and alcohol regulations isn't measured by how many drivers test positive, but how many drivers stay clean and sober because of the rules. Safe and healthy drivers contribute to a safe highway environment, less accidents, and fewer deaths. That's the ultimate proof that drug and alcohol testing and awareness are worth the effort. Um, it's worth the effort, you know, because it, it'll catch up with you, you know either financially, emotionally, or one day you're laying, you're laying sideways on the interstate because you were up too late at the truck stop bar um, the night before and, and you got up too late and you're running an hour behind and next thing you know you're laying your rig down, you know, because you're rushing and you're hungover and you're tired. You don't, you, you don't need to go that far. What do you have? Um, better make mine uh, ginger ale. 